The new starters are out? Oh, I'm going to have to make a podcast about this. And it's finals week. And I have the flu. I give up. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fuller Store. And we're covering the new Gen 7 news that just came out. And I think the first giant crazy bomb thing I want to say is that we here at Fuller Store almost got the prediction right for what region the next games are going to take place in. During our Generation 6.5 slash 7 super discussion video podcast thing, we, uh, I believe there was a discussion that went like this. Person 1. So we're looking at this statue here, uh, this um, uh, strange souvenir, and it looks kind of like a Moe statue. What if it takes place in a Polynesian island country? And I believe that person immediately got cut off with, Oh my god, what if it's African? We have an Egyptian game and we have Egyptian god Pokemon! And we talk about that for an hour and a half. So close! So close to getting a right with Hawaii. Damn it. In other Polynesian countries. <sighs> we could have been on top, Laura. We could have, but we weren't. But we got too excited. Damn you, Swift. I'm gonna blame you for this. Nah, we love you, man. Um... So welcome to the Full Restore podcast, and we're going to talk about uh, the implications of the trailers that were released for Pokemon Sun and Moon in the uh, Ahalo region? Uh, Alola. Alola region. Alola. Yes. It's like Aloha, like how you say hi in Hawaii. Yeah, so the next region is based in Hawaii and other Polynesian style, uh, and... What stuff is there that's interesting? Well, uh, just to run down the topics that we'll discuss, uh, main thing is we have three new starters and two new legendaries. Uh, we have possibly character customization being bat back with eight possible playable character skins to pick from. Uh, four races male, four races female. We have our professor, I think. We have two people that possibly could be the professor, and we have stuff about the region. But notice that that's not a very shocking list. It's almost like this generation is not trying to be some kind of hype, gives a bunch of new stuff thing, and it's actually just a new Pokemon game. It's just a new game. Nothing controversial. It's a Poplio's design by many. I like Poplio's design. Like, I'm gonna admit, he's not my favorite. I'm torn between Rowlet and... Why does he and stand up and do a Superman pose? That's just supposed to be uh, cute. He's like the a The water types are always so cringy. The water Wait. types, at least their mid-evolutions, are often very cringy, trying to be all human-like. Like who? Marshtomp. Like, I liked Marshtomp. Yeah, but it's still awkward. I mean, in fairness, most of the middle stages of all starters are awkward. It's like they're awkward teenage years. Except Grovile, which is always badass. Yeah, Grovile was. And Brakeson. Way better than Delphox. Poor Delphox. Everyone says no, they no. want to start with Litten, but not until they see, see the later episodes. Yeah, episode. Litten. Oh, poor hairball. Like, that. oh, I got screwed over with, with Fennekin. Litten has the. Litten's probably, like, one of the most. It's such a simple fucking design. Like, mm, awesome. I, I'm i really yeah. tempted to play Lin. I'm really tempted because I haven't played the Fire Starter since 4th Gen. But a Grass Flying Starter is like OP as fuck. Oh, really? I heard a lot of people complaining about the typing. Are you fucking kidding me? You know, how, screw them over. Whenever we get a new game, the first thing we do is we beeline for a flying type. Getting to start with a flying type is insane. Just mowing down bugs and mowing down grass types and shit. Like, damn. Uh, I mean, fire types mow down bugs and grass types too. Just a heads up. Well, that that's an interesting thing. What are the are they going to be monotypes? The other two? Or are they going to pick up a secondary typing? Because in Generation 6, for those of you who weren't part of the hype, we thought that the Pokemon were going to be Grass Dark, Water Fighting, and Fire Psychic, which would mean that they're super effective against each other and weak to each other inversely. 
psychic beats fighting, but water beats fire, etc. So what if we had, like... Uh, I honestly don't know how it would even work. Like, what would the fire type be that would be weak to flying? Other than fighting. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that was another thing. When Fennekin came out, people were terrified it was going to be a fight. <laughs> there were bo boxing gloves out its ears. So let's get back on topic. So, um, yes, we can talk about the starters forever. We can talk about the region forever. But I want to talk about the trailer as a whole and realize, like, compare this to last generation. Compare this to the generation before that. It's nothing controversial. In generation six, it was riding on Pokemon, which was a flop. Mega yeah, Evolutions, exactly. which was a thing. I think people are kind of tired of Mega Evolutions by now. Uh, there was character customization, which was not an Oras. There was horde well, battles, which are just a way to farm shinies. What? I mean, character customization wasn't was great. Oras, character it was customization great. was great. All right, sorry. Just, just I liked Oras. I felt yes. the need to defend it. Go on. Well, yeah, but you know, Oras could have had something. I will debate you in a different podcast. The defeatist podcast. Yeah. Um, self plug. So, Judgment Six had a bunch of stuff that was controversial and hyping up. Like people were crazy hyped for the game, and that led to a bunch, a millions, millions of billions and billions of stars. No led to millions of people getting X and Y, playing through them, having a fantastic fucking time, and then they went to play it again and they realized, it's a circle. It's a circle with all these legendaries and nothing about them and shit. Just, ah, just they fucking butchered so much stuff about Gen 6. We have a podcast, it's called The Defeatist. It's a debate show where we talked about the shortcomings of Generation 6. Um, but Generation 6 had a lot that was controversial with it because it was a hugely hyped up thing. Generation 5 was controversial because it was buffer until they could fix the 3D. They had this giant plot thing and black 2 and white 2 and all this stuff. And a lot of people hated the generation because it was this big plot focus thing. Generation 4 was great, but you could say that it's controversial because it was super fucking complicated. It, How is it complicated? Well, one of the reasons why they had to get back the Gen 1ers with Generation 6 is because Generation th 4, if Generation 3 didn't scare off Gen 1ers, Generation 4 scared them all off. We all remember that epic line from all the Gen 1ers, when I was a kid, leg being legendary used to mean something. That was what made co Generation 4 controversial. There were like... 28 legendaries yeah it was really big on the whole like religious themes and symbolism and i think that was part of a reason the creation stuff and like it it was complicated but it was still good by our eyes but controversial nonetheless well, let's look at this release trailer there's nothing to get upset about nothing to get too crazy overhyped but i like that it's just a pokemon game my expectations are lowered. I'm not going to go in expecting some... Like, what can you expect? It's just a Pokemon game. It's just... It's not out to get Gen 1ers. It's not out to capitalize on some nostalgia. It's just a kid's RPG again. It's just like they've perfected the formula. They have the PSS. They have Super Training. And now they're just gonna, like, they have Mega Evolutions. They have every tool they need. They don't need to introduce any new tools. I would like to point out that is this is a fully realized 3D game. None of that chibi shit. The entire overworld is full 3D models. The in-game battles are not sprites, and they're not this weird, like, go into a zone thing to have the Pokemon Stadium camp. It is... Yes, there's the backdrop, but you are standing right there with your Pokemon. You can see your rival fighting you. Maybe that's only for that one battle, but think if that's for every trainer battle, that the trainer is standing right there. What if when you use items, there's an animation for that? You know? Like, this opens the door for everyone saying that there will be 
visible customizations for your Pokemon shit, which probably won't happen, but like, this is a true immersive, fully realized Pokemon game with nothing tying it down. It is just 3D Pokemon adventuring, exploring a new region, nothing that's gonna offend anyone or like, it's just, it's just a, a, a perfect clean Pokemon adventure. It's funny you say that because a lot of people I've been talking to and most people I've talked to are extremely excited about it and I haven't seen really any negativity at all except for those one or two Papuyo haters. Uh, um, some criticisms have been there's nothing new. It's too formulaic. So it's it's cool to hear you like put an opposing spin on that. Like, yeah, well, but yes, that's, that's yes. a good thing. Formulaic, the formula is to release a bunch of crazy shit to sell the game. That That's the formula that we've had. Generation 5 is like, whoa, rotation battles and triple battles. Generation 4 is like, whoa, physical special. Just kidding, physical and special is an amazing thing that's very important. But like, whoa, uh, super fucking crazy Rhyperior and shit. And a shit ton of legendaries and stuff. And... Upgrade content like Gen 4 is amazing. It's hard to rip into Gen 4. But Generation 3 is Gen did you know that Generation 3 was intended to have a bunch of really weird shit, but the cartridge just couldn't handle it? Yeah, I actually did hear that. Were yeah. you back to Jojo at one point? Well, well supposedly. No, the, the, it was a bunch of stuff with like Pokemon were supposed to like fucking not give a shit about you if like they were supposed to have moods that would swing throughout the day based on their nature. Oh, that like, would have been cool. Well, all this stuff that happens in the um, battle tents in Emerald was supposed to be like a thing. But uh, basically it got rushed out and got a bit of Sonic 06 treatment. And that's why we have Pokemon as it is today, where if Pokemon were allowed to, if the hardware of Generation 3 allowed Pokemon to develop the way it was going with friendship evolutions and breeding and stuff, we would have a very different game today. I mean, I think it's good. I feel like that would put a lot of people off today, but it, is, it makes me well, kind we, of sad. I feel would like, have it, would like it would really be like a... It'd be in my dream come true as a role player because it would be like... You know, it'd be like... a Not a dating sim, but you'd have to like manage all their personalities and shit and feed them certain things throughout the day and like probably talk with them or like take them to places that would make them happy and stuff like that's what pokemon could have been if that was allowed to happen in some ways we kind of have it like uh we have the affection meter now like yeah, yeah it's all optional but it's they eventually got it all there it took them a long time though because they tried pokestar studios and they tried the ami plaza and stuff like it was all in little dosage that people shoved in a corner as simple as the trailer was the one thing you're overlooking now i i didn't extensively follow ruby and sapphire release but i feel like the addition of physical special moves natures that wasn't really well physical special first... moves was in general was it the trailer physical well, and no. you were talking about earlier how this generation is great because it's not advertising anything new or controversial but the quote unquote controversial features introduced in Gen 3. Were they advertised or were they more like I, I No, I, I'm saying this only goes back to, this barely goes back to Generation 4. I'm not saying every generation mm -hmm. has it because Pokemon Gen 3 released in like 2003 or 2004. YouTube didn't exist back then. So no, that's true. people didn't, like people saw advertisements on TV. They didn't see a viral release trailer. Or they went on sketchy sites and believed in the Pokey gods like pika blue <laughs> so yeah and then we have shit like go to the moon and fight Jirachi and Deoxys and stuff um, i actually believe that yeah i'm glad you guys got the nod with uh with the delta episode i know it was it was really really nostalgic it's like whoa i've waited my whole life for this pokemon actually. has grown a reputation in recent years as this overhyped crazy oh my god look at all this new shit but we haven't had just a new Pokemon adventure since Generation 3, you know? Generation 3 was like, for all of us, it was, okay, you've been fighting around a bunch of cities and Japan and shit. 
go on a fucking tropical island and go surfing and run around in hot weather. That was Generation 3. It's technically, technically still in Japan. It's yes, the but, Yushu region. But it's not in an urban area. It's You're in a fucking jungle. Like, when you look at the manga, it really shows you that Hoenn is kind of a scary place to live. Like, it, it within the first few chapters, Ruby is fucking washed up in the ocean. Like, it's a pretty crazy place with jungles and hashtag too much water and such. Hashtag too much water. But this generation, I like to think of it as Hoenn on crack. Because it's even more tropical and it's even more of an adventure and it's even more new and it's even more unknown. And it's even more of a a fresh start. Generation 3 was still like, whoa, you moved from Johto, ha ha. And stuff like that. Like, this is just as far from any other region as you can fucking get because it's in the middle of the fucking Pacific. Let's be real here. The symbolism of getting as far away from from Japan, the eastern seaboard of the U.S., and the west coast of Europe as you possibly can. The middle of the Pacific. Um, but with Unova, they try to take it away from Japan by bringing it to America. And that then didn't they, work that well. Then they tried to to restart it again. Like when I was when I was still watching X and Y, it definitely felt like a callback to the original Pokemon. Like this is new. This is separate. This is a different country. Here's a remix of the original theme type thing. So I feel like they're constantly trying to really separate yeah. generations and regions but here's the thing like it is a u.s co- if if canonically alolo alola is a u.s colony kind of dealio which i don't think it really will be like unless there's a shit ton of american culture put into that this is our first eastern pokemon game because japan is a western country nowadays ever since after world war ii Japan is a Western country. It, it got turned into one. Alola is our first Eastern country. Kind of. <laughs> like, this is culture that we've wanted for years. We wanted to go to, like, India or Ch- China or Egypt or any place that's not a Western country. But we've kept going to Western countries. This is kind of the closest we get to an Eastern country. So... The culture could be even more cool and different and fresh. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. Did the history student have anything to say about that? No, I I, I agree with you. I mean, I don't know. I don't know where I can where I disagree. I was just thinking, what if there are like no Tropius in the region? What if it tries to pull like? Uh, well, I mean, Alamalola will get a new Tropius. Yeah, I was just thinking, because, like, in Unova, they really tried to sever it by, at least in the first two games, not having Well, the any... the, the whole thing was, like, there are no Magikarp in the ocean. Which yeah, that was, was so weird. But uh, it, just, it just got me thinking, my mind started wandering, like, if a true, true sever between the regions really did happen, no Tropius in that region, and I feel like that would be wrong. Sorry, I'm going yeah, off Yeah, but, like, and then... What was the explanation that all the Pokemon from older generations came in over two years? I just found them. Just kind of turned uh... up. They were kind of a lot of stuff in Pokemon. Like, uh, I was rewatching one of the old episodes from... Well, this is, this is uh, in regards to the anime, but I'm sure you can find examples in the games, too. Um, originally, when Ash was going to the Johto region, Professor Oak just told him that they were discovering new Pokemon. They hadn't previously discovered all these Johto Pokemon. But then Ash kind of got there, and that entire plot point, the reason he went there, discovered these new Pokemon, just kind of disappeared. Well, yeah, that's because Generations 1 and 2 and 3, and I think up till 5, still had the tagline of Gotta Catch Them All, so it was still driven by selling the games. So, like, the idea of go discover new Pokemon was not directed towards Ash as much as it was directed towards the kids. Even though you could not, you literally cannot catch them all in uh, Gen 3. Yep. I mean, can you, does Fire Red and Leaf Green have enough? 
uh, and- you go to you you transfer over with Fire Red Leaf Green, and also you can get Chikorita and shit after you've completed the national decks. So it's all of the Generation One and all of the Generation Three Pokemon with some of the Generation Two Pokemon, and then the starters, something like that. Okay. If you completed the Gen 3 decks, kudos to you. Yeah, you that need shit's hard. Sapphire, Emerald, Fire Red, and Leaf Green. There's no battle I think you'd have to use uh, XD, Gale of Darkness. Oh, yeah, because you got to get Lugia somehow. That shit was crammed with Gen 2 Pokemon. Um, Let's look at yeah, Jirachi. So Generation 7 is shaping up to be a refreshing start. You know, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to try to avoid uh, leaks and spoilers. As yeah. Much as possible, you know, but it, it's, it's going to be a little bit impossible in the age of the internet. Also, we have a Pokemon channel. Yeah, so it's like we have to report on some of it. But, uh. Yeah. Oops. Oh, well. Um, I'm just disturbed because I, I can go into this and just play the game and have, like, a truly nostalgic, raw Pokemon experience. Oh no, it truly But stopped. I want to do another Cobra run because it worked so well for Auras. I mean, you could. Why Why couldn't you? I, I, don't, I don't know. Should I just, like, I haven't just played a Pokemon game since Generation 5. You know, I, mean, I just sat down you... and played Black and White 2. And, like, that was really fun, but, like, I want to do another Cobra run because I haven't been able to play emulators for anything, you know? Yeah, and I just did a run. Of, I've, I've, I haven't done anything with it. You remember the old the Emerald Race thing we were doing? Yeah, I still have that file with Samantha in it, and I guess I'll do something at some point. I still have the saves, but I that's mean, that was just me playing through the game. Like, I think I'm ready for another challenge run. If you really wanted to be like a hardcore Pokemon fan, you buy Sun and Moon, and first you a fun run, I, I'm, and then you home run. I. I I got to be a little responsible with my money now that I'm in college. Yeah, I've ar- I'm already starting to save up for it. I'm going to, like, just bolt out of the dorms. It's so weird to think when the next Pokemon game comes out. Oh, I'll God, we'll both be in college. We and I'll have to, to, like, oh, yeah. man. Someone wait, wait, will have it to comes out in November, right? Yeah, November 18th. It's 18th, a damn it, Friday. I've been, I've been, like, looking into it, oh, like, man, how that's much kind of That's Friday. kind of... Is that after midterms? I hope it's after midterms. I think it's like right smack during midterms. No, no, not again. For me anyways. So I'm going to buy on the release date, but probably not touch it until Christmas break. And it's going to be the hardest thing I'll ever do. No, we'll have to wait till Thanksgiving. Oh, oh, right. Thanksgiving break is a thing. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, Christ. Uh, that's after the election. We got to vote. All right. It is... It is our duty as citizens, yes. even, even if it's not regardless mandatory. of your opinions of the candidates, I highly recommend yes. you go and do that. Yeah, you, 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 Unless you, live you in got Canada. nothing to complain about if you if you didn't vote. Um, even though, like, the primary election, like, I was like, oh, I guess I got to do that. I blink, and then it's like, oh, it's over. What? I didn't hear shit about that. So I, I missed the primary election because I was doing schoolwork, and I didn't notice it was happening. All I heard was a shit ton of rallies that rolled through Plattsburgh. We had a ton of rallies up here, too. Like, uh, I guess you, upstate New York was actually a battleground. I know. It was so weird. And if well, we left, it's, it's because like, we gotta... some people actually think that we can have... <laughs> Talk about a red card. N- upstate New York politics. Uh, New York City is such a big, giant blue dot. Big, giant blue ink blot, and it's supported by Albany. But the rest of the entire fucking state is pretty damn red because it's a bunch of fucking idiots living in the middle of nowhere. Um, trees. Uh, Rural areas. So, like, the thing is, is that I can understand how it'd be a battleground if people actually thought that you could get enough of the red voters to focus their assaults on a specific candidate, and then maybe you could... But, like, there's even if you got every single county... Outside, even if you got Albany, New York's still going to be a blue state. Like, seriously. The theory is that some of the blues are going to switch to reds because of both. Actually, no, at this point, any possible candidate who is running well, there's, is. There's, 
there's no unconventional reason. beliefs. So yeah. Um, also, Trump is like chilling out now that he's the actual person. They're like, okay, okay, you win, but you got chill. Let's get off politics. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, this is like. I don't think we said anything controversial. Yeah. No. I you think. Know? I think. I think I cut it well. Um, we here at Full Restore do not endorse anyone. Candidates. We just. Unless you want to give me a shit ton of dark money. Get that 40 people watching my video to vote for your candidate. All right. Um, uh, we have not received any money. I have still yet to pay out a, ca- uh, pay out a check from YouTube after five years. Um, you and I'm nowhere that. close. Uh, and use what, money, what little money you have to buy both copies of the game and do two runs. Uh I still have to do the random red run. I still have to play that fucking thing. I, I need to finish to my Alpha Sapphire when I never did that. I, I had this team, and they were wonderful, and I was afraid to go up against Norman because of my glass cannon Gallade. Just, you're doing a combo run. You'll be fine. You just got to train up an entire team uh, to do it all over again, or else they'll be stuck in a coma for eternity. Well, I also feel guilty because I might have... Uh, Cheated. purposely. Oh, you sacked uh, someone. Might have purposely sacrificed a few few Pokemon for dramatic effect, and then having trouble writing. Dramatic effect. <laughs> that is the <laughs> most Laura thing I've ever heard you say. It's like, I just... Laura, you want to know what you just pulled in that sense? What? You pulled the mermaid from Monster Musume, just like the mermaid. Because she's the um uh she's the uh um romantic who's like wants someone else to get with the main character so that her love can be tragic and wants oh to my like gosh. die and shit so you basically did what she would do playing a game where she's like oh I'm gonna win I don't use know the status mermaid, move five like... times oh no they died how tragic their love is <laughs> it's literally what I did I start with this sort of like mud or something and it was in flare and east gym and i was up against uh, another numble so i put my numble out there and i'm like let's see what happens earth power, earth power, earth power, earth power. yeah whoever moves faster is the winner you went final lost. destination on that shit <laughs> so um yeah that- damn uh mine was much less elegant i really didn't want to lose my super op cradley i got from you so i uh, put Toxic on a sturdy Don fan I caught and I sent it out against Kyogre and I used Toxic and I healed for two turns just to be sure until <laughs> Kyogre was at half health then I send out Cradley to use Giga Drain and kill Kyogre that was I dirty. That when you killed Kyogre, I was so pissed at you. Well, I mean, I already got an encounter in that area. Rules are rules. But, uh, yeah, no, you're a better person than me. You don't sacrifice. Am I? Yeah, you don't I sacrifice. Sacrificed, I sacrificed a Dawn fan for a win, for a win that I very easily would have gotten anyway. Like, you want to know how unnecessary that cheat was? Kyogre used the primal water thing on my uh, cradley on Oliver, and it did a fifth of his health. The signature water move that they introduced did a sixth. Kara's death, well, Kara's fainting was completely in vain, uh, but I brought everyone back because I beat the game, so yeah, did you, success. Did you name your Don fan? Wait, your Don fan? Kara? How yeah. did you spell it? K A R A. Oh, okay. So you didn't do it like. Oh, I don't want to. You, your Undertale playthrough isn't done. Well, we'll, we'll get back to playing that. This well, technically, summer. you won't see it because you're not in the right run. But whatever. Just know that Kara is like a huge Undertale thing. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, you and I will have another play session of that. I just did not want to play it on my own because I just couldn't give a shit about the game. Oh my gosh. Don't I, I, ever talk to me again. No, I'm just kidding. Well, like, it's great fun when you're playing with me, but, like, I don't want to play alone because, like, I'll just become jaded, and then at some point I'll just start killing everything. So I need 
I need you as the anchor to keep me on the pacifist run. All right, I'll be or your... not the pacifist run, because I... It's not the pacifist run, but, uh... I'll restrict your Inakara. I'll reel, I'll reel them back in. All right. Um, you know what I just said. <laughs> well, I think I know what I think I know what you mean. Um. Anyway, uh, anything else we can say about the trailer? Uh, don't check out the legendaries yet. I think that's about it. Ooh. Okay. Legendaries. So we know five Pokemon from the region, plus the Tiki Pokemon that is bound to come out. The the middle Pokemon that'll get no, more of a spotlight. No, like, in my guard. Um, uh, there's uh the the statue was said to resemble a Pokemon from that region. The strange souvenir. So we're gonna oh, get yeah. tiki Pokemon. I think it's gonna be like a legendary. I'm not gonna I lie. think it's just gonna be a random ass thing. A random ass thing. Like Sylveon. Ooh. Sylveon was pretty it's just humanoid though. I don't know. I'm a little scared to see what it resembles. Oh my god. We could get a bug and a f- flying evolution from this gen. Because it's oh, a tropical area. Evolution would be really cute. Come to think I never considered that. Never in my 18 years of existence. And I'm just imagining no, it with uh, 10 of bug eyes. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm wondering what they're going to do with the ghost girl plot. What, what ghost girl are we going to get in Hawaii? Maybe something. It would be cool if they based it off like an. I know an shit about Hawaii. I know the historical significance about like the sharecroppers and the overtaking. And I know two of their leaders. I know Queen, <laughs> Lilo, Li, Queen Lily. And I know. Um, King Kamehameha. Yeah, there was a king of Hawaii called King Kamehameha. Did you take world history this year? Nope. Uh, oh. I, took, I, I know that from fucking middle school. Dude, I forgot. I took AP World and I just forgot everything. I did wonderful on the test and I'm like, oh, okay, I don't need this anymore. Yes, That's because I'm not you got out of taking a gen ed history class. So, yeah. boo. Out of two, actually. Maybe three. I don't know. Yeah, we'll know actually, my, my my English tests counted for, like, all sorts of weird shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, they count for, like, all sorts of things. entities. And, and when I was doing it through the uh, through the AP website, it was, like, I took two of the same test. And I, even though it was, like, they counted both of the AP tests as two of the same test. It was weird. Um, in literature and language? Yeah, something like that. Uh, even so t- though, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, maybe they just maybe Queensbury didn't tell us that the uh, they actually were the same test for juniors and the seniors. No, they're different. They're different. I literature was tougher a little bit, but I don't I know. Think. Maybe that was all just in our heads. No, 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 no. It was the structure was different. There was a ton more poetry and analysis. Yeah, that, that was it. Also, there were more essays. Jesus Christ, I still remember rushing those tests because i had a watch that ticked over to hours and minutes when it was previously minutes and hours so it said 120 and i thought that i had an hour and 20 left when it was actually 160 minutes so i rushed my test and i found i had 40 minutes left oh my god i would have i wrote three essays in like 40 minutes I have no idea how you did that because I almost ran I'm out of time. I'm a good test taker. That's how I do. And I borrow some of your test taking skills. Uh, Not that no, I'm a bad one. I'm just an English No, one. because you would also get the uh, horrible ADHD. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind, uh, 10 hours from now, I'm supposed to be turning into essays. Oh, right. All right. So did you oh, let's get the legendaries. Let's get the legendaries. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, shoot. We went out on tangent again. So now you know about... Politics and AP testing. Hope you guys, hope you guys were, in, were into. That. Uh, now, now we're a real podcast. Um, so let's cover uh, legendaries. Who do you like better? Uh, before you answer, I, I want to say, um, do you watch Always Sunny in Philadelphia? No, I have no. It's like a foreign language you're speaking right now. Always Sunny in Philadelphia had one of their episodes had a skit. Uh, the whole thing was, it wasn't a skit, but the whole episode was ro- revolving around this play they wanted to put on. The play was uh, Dayman. Uh, one of the main characters plays a superhero kind of vigilante character called Dayman, and his uh, nemesis is Nightman. And they have a song, and the song goes, Dayman, oh, 
fighter of the night. Man. Well, and that goes on. And I saw a post that blew my fucking mind because it works. For those of you who are always sunny in Philadelphia fans listening, hopefully at least one, um, uh, Day Cat. Oh, fighter of the night, Bat. Because the legendaries are a cat and a bat. Oh, like it I'm so fucking lost. works so well. Day Cat, fighter of the night, Bat. It, oh my god, that is what I will call them till I die. It is oh. the 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 sun legendary is day cat and the night and the moon legendary is night bat. Did I mention? Um, I know I'm going a little off topic here, but Rallet's name we we named him in Anime Club. He's uh, not Rallet anymore. He's Borb, Bird, Borb, Borb. Oh, oh, because he's because he's spherical. Yeah. So everyone needs to go out and name the Rallet's Borb. Make it a thing. Well, also like, he's like. The millions of arts of uh, Poplio balancing Borb. I saw those. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Uh, yeah, that art came in fast. Oh my gosh, like, hours. Fa- One oh, it came in before hours. Uh, I counted forty minutes till the first porn. Uh, anyway, um. Oh my god! I'm like, wait, what? Forty minutes. Uh. You said Borb, and I'm like, no, what? I just told you about Borb, but no, you didn't. Um, yeah, uh, they that shit came out faster than people finishing Five Nights Phrase Three, which only took like four hours. Like people, artists, and people who rip into games and hackers, and everyone just works so damn fast today. Shit takes no time at all, except hacking Just Cause Three. Oh. No more urban legends me. about Muse under the truck. Cause we yeah, have the te- shit moves fast. Now. Um, although, gotta... like, I haven't watched any of the trailer breakdowns because, like, I feel like that defeats my whole philosophy I have going on. But, like, um, it is really cool that the trainers are in the battles. Like, that's really immersive. You're like, Rowlet's looking back and you're just there. Like, the camera shows you. What if you use items and there's an animation for that? I doubt that, but it'd be cool. I mean, are they just going to stand there like idiots the whole time? They're going to be, like, cheering them on and a bunch of shit. You can do it, Lit, and... I really hope that that shit runs well on the old 3DSs. Because I I bet it looks amazing on the new 3DS, but... Man, uh, that fully realized 3D world is going to take some hits on my processor. Yeah, uh, the region looks beautiful. It really does. I, I want to island hop till I, like, forever. All right. But now, the moment that everyone's been waiting 46 minutes for, the sun or moon, which do you prefer if you <sighs> had to choose? We have to talk about typing. To like, one. what ty- Like, people think that they're going to be both be fairy types. What if it's fire fairy and dark fairy? Or No, I can't really see sun guy over there being a fairy. Also, I love people who are, like, it's Mega Pyroar and Mega Noivern. Honestly, yeah, that was my my only. I don't want to say criticism, but the second I saw the uh, the fire, not the fire. I don't know what type day it is. Bat, uh, Sunlight day cat. Fairy. Uh, day yeah, cat. I'm like it's 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 recolored Pyroar. It's alternatively colored. But also, they have Pyroar. like celestial faces. Yeah, I noticed That's that. Really cool. It loved the attention to detail there. Yeah, like, so that's good attention to detail. There's a lot of bad attention to detail, like overcomplicated designs. Like, we still don't know what the fuck is the deal with the Gen 6. Why does Xerneas have a million colors on its thing? And, uh... I think there's a reason. I, sometimes I go, I haven't read Xerneas, but... Zygarde's of... colors and the, the red, blue, orange, green <laughs> thing. Ugh. A lot of the times they're based off of... Uh... Uh, mythology and stuff. So go on Wikipedia and read about it because there are subtle like. I, I don't want to go back to Gen Six because like you guys heard like you and every anyone who's been listening to the channel when the Zygarde announcement got re- released, I almost lost all faith in Pokemon. Like I lost faith for a good six months. Like I just didn't give a shit because like it's a mix of they're getting too complicated and not explaining 
anything. So it's like, I like overcomplicated stuff if it's explained. But when you make a bunch of overcomplicated shit and then you don't do anything with it, like, we got nothing for super 100% Zygarde in any of the games. All that Zygarde shit was only for the anime. All those core core leaks were only for the anime. The game has, like, the game data has thousand arrows and thousand waves, but it has no dog or super mega thing. Like, that is so demoralizing, and it's just a deplorable thing for the game designers to do, to allow happen. But if this generation's just going to be a just a Pokemon game, I will be so relieved because I can just relax and just play Pokemon and not be pissed off about shit. You jinxed it. Tomorrow they're gonna Koro Koro's gonna leak something major. Like a new types. A, a movie. They're gonna leak a movie and they're gonna announce five different legendaries for it. And those legendaries are never gonna be released outside of events. And it won't add a thing to the generation. Please they're gonna no. complicate the uh, the battle system by introducing a new type of attack, like metaphysical. <sighs> it's not physical, it's not special, it's metaphysical. Okay. It's abstract. Speaking of metas, this is a fucking Okay, here's a ring target for you guys. What if Smogon has a revolutionary d- new decision to allow a format to better explore the new Pokemon and they have a standard rotation? What I don't Smogon, Smogon, Smogon. What, what if what is Smogon tiers? We, like we have the Smogon tiers, okay? We have OU and all that shit. What, what, if, they, that? what if they make two new ladders? of OU to everything like that, that are smaller and are a vintage generations one through four and a standard generation four through seven. I think somebody's been playing too much Magic the Gathering, the Legacy deck. And Hearts. Um, Seriously, what's your favorite? uh, So your favorite is the Grass Starter? You'll, You'll pick Grass? I don't know. I'm re- I honestly love Lit and Rowlet equally. I don't I know what Lit to do. love Lit and Rowlet equally, too. Sorry, Pop Leo. You're... But a part of me wants Pop Leo just because... I don't want a fucking water type. Like I really like Pop Leo. And there's going to be Pop so many love. cool water types. Maybe I need to see the final evolution. I mean... Oh my no gosh. I still mind, remember girls. the first time I saw a chestnut. I was so... You don't want to be chest pinned. I picked Chespin thinking it was a grass dark starter. I trained it special attack. I had a modest one. I mean, in fairness, everyone, everyone like in can fairness, play in Delphox, fairness, but... in fairness, that Pokemon got countered by a Wobbuffet wearing lipstick and it died and was immediately replaced by Bulbasaur. <laughs> Bulbasaur kind of got that treatment, too, though. I mean, everyone talked about Charmander and Squirtle, and in retrospect, Bulbasaur is just just as well designed. He just got, you know, dragons. Um, yeah, Squirtle so, uh, like, I, I, I have no no idea what I'm going to do for starters, but seriously, what's the typing of the legendaries? We have five and a half minutes left. What the fuck's the typing of the legendaries? Leave your predictions in the comments below. No, 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 Laura, what what is it? Oh, uh, <laughs> in spot here. I don't is know. Is it going to be another dark flying? Dark psychic? Fairy psychic? Maybe a Very light dark? sound type. Shut Not up. That Shut guy. Up. No, no, a bat echolocation. What if the sun isn't actually, what if the sun, what if, the, what if day cat oh, isn't actually a fire type? What if it's, what if it's psychic fairy? I don't, I don't know. know. Suddenly I'm starting to like, I hate to be that guy. Like, I remember seeing the sound and light types on Tumblr no, and Facebook and laughing. Not introduce more types. But now I'm starting to feel to like that. The sun produces light. The moon is dark and bats use echolocation. Okay, okay. Here's, I'm going to disprove your sound theory. Here's how I'm going to disprove your sound theory, okay? Okay. They have constellations on their face. Sound doesn't work in space. Oh, maybe they're galaxy types. Maybe it'll be a a fire type and a. Is the bat a dark type? I can't even tell. 
I can't tell. It looks like they're it'd be so sparkly. Sort of dark what if they're fairies? I can't see Pyroar 2.0 being a fairy. I think we're going to have a Palkia Dialga situation on our hands. This isn't being dragons either. No, no, no. Palkia and Dialga were both dragons. Oh, yeah, they're both they were dragons. steel and water. Like, what the fuck does that mean? I what the fuck was Palkia, Palkia water type? I never figured that out. Like, the f like the really flow of time it. could make sense. But... Like, maybe they were supposed to be switched of what was time and what was space. I don't know. It's steel, reminiscent of time, though. What the like, oh, it's water reminiscent of space. Yeah. It's kind of random. So Maybe it'll what be... If the, what if the typings for legendaries make no fucking sense? That could like, happen, too. What, what if it's fire steel and fairy dark? I don't know. I, I, I keep thinking fairy because they're so sparkly. I, I think pyro might be fire steel. Steel? Really? I don't know. It's, it's just so... Shooty. I don't, I don't know. Time will tell. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna look out for those leaks, even though before I think it, I it might I be fire put steel in, or dark wait. steel. I don't know. Um. Yeah. That's that's this part of the podcast. Uh, we, we'll have more people on to talk about more things as they happen. But uh, welcome to the summer of YouTube. Um, the channel's coming back. Time to do a bunch of collabs and stuff. Probably not gonna lie. I mean, I'll, maybe I'll try to get something up in the summer. Just, just but... post shit on this channel. Just like, just do that. I'm gonna be mostly active in the summer. I've just I've started looking at my curriculum, and it's very unlikely I'll be able to post anything when I'm yeah, not. Yeah. So just post a bunch of stuff to the Forest Store channel. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, at the very least, I'll be in collabs. Um. I like yeah, uh, Laura. Did you watch uh, our recent? Uh, um. Uh, welcome to the. Uh, Fill your bag section where we uh, plug our own shit. Um, Laura, have you seen the new Pokemon Channel episode? No. Sorry. <laughs> Don't be like me. Content. Go on, watch it. Um, yeah, uh, so we have two, more, two recent uploads, which are both featuring High Voltage, good friend of mine. The reason why this channel exists, actually. Um. The first is just a general, uh, a great general podcast. Uh, one of the things we cover is um, stories with the previous challenge runs. I, I cover the entirety of my uh, paired coma run. Um, and you get to learn who High Voltage is and a bunch of stuff like that and the other stuff we have in the pipeline for him. The second is a Pokemon channel episode all about Generation 4 Ash and what happens to him through Generation 4 and how the ending of Generation 4 set the pace for a precedent that would be the reason why Generation 5 in the anime sucked and also speculation on what could happen in Generation 6. And Laura, I think I'm going to start watching the anime this summer because Generation what? 6, like, I, I miss keep it. hearing I good things about it. I stopped in the fall, but I honestly miss it. So I might pop back in. I feel I empty. Mean, like, Here's the main reason why I need to get back into watching it. Um, they actually know how to animate Gardevoirs now. And yeah, I kind of have an obligation to watch it then. Like it's People have just been sending me gift sets of Deantha's fight with Ash. And I'm like, damn, I kind of need to watch this shit now. Because like the fully CG cut like battle things like... Laura, you know how in all previous generations when a Pokemon would jump up into an attack, you'd have that weird colored stock background JPEG? Oh my gosh, That shit's memory. gone now. No. It's all fully realized 3D stuff. Who animates them? Not I to get off I think they just get random people. Like, I think they commission it. No, 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 no. They got a, they got a Pokemon XY production. Wait, I think I know who did them. I, I'm I'm big on. I want to know who I want to know who did the cutscene from uh, the Psychic Gym, because that intro is phenomenal. Where is it? So maybe we'll watch the anime this summer. I'll watch a little bit. I won't have time to totally keep up with it, but uh, I mean. Yeah, we can do I, a review on a few episodes. Any any anything stands Pokemon out? Pokemon Channel review episode one of. 
the, the anime. Episode one of season six of the anime. Christ, they are nowhere near finishing up the anime, by the way. They're going to be so behind when Generation 7 comes out. They might rush it. I don't know. Maybe they'll just take their sweet-ass time. So, okay, so the studios changed a lot throughout the years. But according to Wikipedia, the studio is Team Cato. That's from 2010 to the present. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. It's K-A-T-O. I'm pretty good at studios, but I've never heard them. What are, yeah, like, the anime... It doesn't have the exact same style, but from what I've seen from, like, a few videos, the anime looks like the level of quality of what the black-white teaser trailers were. Like, it's all that now. Oh, wait. Actually, how this works is... I was wrong. The studio is OLM Inc., and the teams have just changed over the years. So, uh, Team Kato is their newest one. They've all they actually worked on some... Things, other things I know. They worked on Berserk, which I never watched, but I guess was good. Uh, I mean, I've heard of some of these, but there's nothing super famous here. Pokemon is definitely their most prominent work. It's the longest lasting anime. Oh, they did Yokai Watch too. That doesn't really surprise me. Yeah. And everything it's else. It's weird to think that the longest lasting anime is the one that was made to South Games. I don't know. I mean, I guess... Kind of, you have to consider that Dragon Ball Z ended... Oh, oh, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's not... It's... it's the, the thing wasn't that it's the longest-running anime. It's something about specifically 90s anime. Like, it's the only 90s anime to have not taken a hiatus or something. That might be true. Did One Piece yeah. take a hiatus? I'm pretty sure it did. I don't follow One Piece. I mean... I don't. I don't have time for 800 episodes. Um, I think like the it was the thing that like the only two 90s anime, the only two 90s cartoons that have not had anything stop them that have like been running unstopped for the longest time. Like the only ones that have ran without a break were Pokemon and SpongeBob are the only things that have not stopped from SpongeBob. from the 90s. Yeah, SpongeBob is the only running '90s show. Fairly Odd Parents. That should. That's be not '90s. Not. Is that '90s? Oh God, no. Oh, yeah. The more you know. Yeah, uh, there's a bunch of channel. You can look up Channel Fred Rare. They have a bunch of old uh, cartoon history stuff. I might, cause I like. Channel like... Fred Rare is a very interesting YouTube channel. Like, the guys who made Fairly Odd Parents and shit have a YouTube channel. Oh, seriously? Yeah, I found. I just discovered it. It's it's been around for fucking ever. They're the Cartoon Hangover guys. They're the no. same group. The is Cartoon the, Hangover is, logo is a warped version of the Channel Frederator logo. Not to it's go been on YouTube since like 2007. Not to go massively off topic, but is the guy who made Danny Phantom there, and it, are they making another? The season? guy who made Danny Phantom is the guy who made Fairly Odd Parents. Is the guy who runs Channel Frederator. I know. So He's wait. The CEO. Why, why can't he make more Danny Phantom? What's stopping him? Because he's making Channel Frederator. They upload daily content. But what if he abandoned his YouTube channel, his dreams, and his success and that'd made a, a second That'd be a big problem because Channel Frederator is so huge that actually Hyun's Dojo is a part of them. Yeah, I discovered that the Channel Frederator network actually is tied in with Hyun's Dojo. It's actually pretty cool. And he has Dojo. Like, that is not a very well-known form. So that's no, it, it is huge now. They do the one-minute melees for Screw Attack. Oh, really? Yeah. They do the one-minute melees. Well, at least some of them. Goals. Maybe I'll get there in ten years. He owns Dojo is a big fucking deal now. It's never too late. Maybe. I don't know. But, uh... Oh, we did the thing where we went off topic again. Yeah, uh, no, uh, that's the leftovers. Yeah, just... cool. All right, like, uh, say your just goodbyes. Five. All right, is that it? Yeah, let's let's say it. Let's sign off. All right. <sighs> Laura. Yes. Sign off. Right. Oh. Uh, it's been night. a while since we did this. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, Wherever you are, I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Yes, and I hope you all make the right choice come November. Uh, and not talking about the election, I'm talking about choosing sun or moon. <laughs> that, 
Back to elections. I'm just gonna sign off with the song. Day cat. Oh, fighter of the night, bat. Bye.